Welcome to the lecture video for section 5.6. In 5.6, uh, we switch to a new perspective on integrals. We've looked at integrals in terms of area functions and using fundamental theorem of calculus. Now we're going to look at integrals as limits of approximating sums. And the reason for this is integration is difficult. There are a lot of integrals for which we just don't have a technique to use. And this idea of an integral being a limit of an approximating sum can help us get reliably accurate values for integrals, even complex ones. It was a German mathematician named Riemann who first developed this idea. So these are named Riemann sums after him. We try to approximate the value of the area under the curve using a series of rectangles. And by changing the number of rectangles, we can change how close this approximation is to the actual value. There's different ways to form your rectangles. In a left Riemann sum, you put the top left corner on the function and create rectangles that way. And that's going to be denoted with L sub n. A right Riemann sum, you put the top right corner of your rectangle on the function. Uh, that's denoted by R sub n. And then there's a midpoint sum. You take the middle of an interval and you put the rectangle's height at that value. And generally speaking, this midpoint sum is going to be a better approximation of an integral. But all three of these, as you increase the number of rectangles that you use, are going to approach a limit, and they'll approach the same limit, and that we can then take as the value as of the integral. Now those are sums using rectangles. There's also another version called a trapezoidal sum, where we make trapezoids, um, and you can see that does a pretty nice job of hugging the curve. So to make your trapezoid, you put both the left and the right endpoints onto the function to create your trapezoid shape. And the trapezoidal sum is always the average of the left and right Riemann sums on the same subinterval. So the easiest way to find the trapezoidal is just to take your left and right, add them up, divide by 2, and that gets you the trapezoidal approximation. Here we're being asked to use the left and right Riemann sum to estimate the value of an integral. We're going to be told how many rectangles to use. When doing this by hand, we want to keep that number low, and you'll see why. But honestly, you get better approximations as you use more subintervals. And then we'll do the same thing and do a trapezoidal sum. So first of all, what I'm going to begin by doing is calculating the width of each of my rectangles. And in order to do that, there's a simple little formula. You just take the change in x, which will be the width of the rectangle, is always equal to you take your limits of your integral, subtract them, and divide by the number of subintervals you want. So our integral goes from 0 to 1. 1 is the b value, 0 is the a value, and we're supposed to divide that by 4, meaning each of our rectangles is going to have a width of 1 fourth. So we're trying to create rectangles going from 0 to 1, and we want each one to have a width of 1 fourth. Now we're going to calculate the function values for these particular points so you, we can get a graph which will help us. So I'm going to calculate what f of 0 is, keeping in mind that my f of x is negative x squared plus 2. So I'm going to substitute in 0. So I have negative 0 squared plus 2 which is 2. After f of 0, if these are all 1 quarter of a unit apart, my next x value I care about is 1 fourth. So I'm going to substitute that in. And you can do these things with your calculator. I just like doing it by hand, but it's totally fine to go to a calculator and type this in. Just be careful here. You do need to square the 1 fourth first and then negate it. this one is going to be a value of 31 sixteenths, or just under 2. 
Now again, you can pick up a calculator and get the decimal approximation for that as well. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while I generate the other values that we're interested in, which are going to be if you add on another quarter, you're going to be at a half. If you add on a quarter to that, we're going to be at three quarters. And the last value we're going to need is F of one. Now again, if you have a hard time adding the quarters onto the fractions, just think about the decimals. So zero is our first point, then 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one. All right, once you've calculated all of those values, now you're going to plot those to get the graph. So f of zero is two, so I put a point up here. So that's my graph of my curve. Now I'm gonna make a second version over here. Now I'm going to begin drawing my rectangles for my left and right approximations. So when you do a left Riemann sum, remember it's the left endpoint that's supposed to generate the height of the bar. So starting at zero, I take the left endpoint that's on the function, go across a width of one fourth, and drop it down. And there's my first Riemann rectangle. Take the left endpoint, go across, bring it down. Left endpoint, go across. Now notice, I don't use this last endpoint to create another rectangle because that's beyond the interval from zero to one. I'm going to calculate an approximating sum by finding the areas of these rectangles. And the reason we use rectangles is because we have a nice simple formula to use to do that math. This is now going to be L sub four, the left approximation. And all you're gonna do is calculate the length and the width and multiply them together, and we're gonna add up all of those areas. So for the first rectangle, the length right here is being controlled by the height of this particular point, which is F sub zero, which is at two. The width is one quarter. I'm gonna do the width of one quarter times what's controlling its height plus. The next rectangle is going to have a width of one quarter again. This time, the height is being controlled by the leftmost endpoint, which is located at one fourth. So I'm going to take one fourth of the function value at one fourth. Plus, I'm going to take another one fourth because for the third bar, the width is still one fourth. The height is being controlled by the left endpoint, which is at one half. So I'm going to take one quarter of the function value at one half. And finally, I have one more rectangle. We are supposed to have four subintervals, meaning four rectangles. So our height is being controlled by the left endpoint, which is at three quarters. Now notice, again, this last value, f of one, I don't actually use because we didn't create a bar off of that value. Now, to make life simpler, you'll notice there's a one-fourth in front of all of these function values. So normally, we just factor that right out to the front, and we write out what function values we're going to sum up to get our approximation. Next, we have all these values already calculated, so we're gonna go up here, substitute them in. And at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and add all these quantities inside the parentheses. That ends up being a total of, that ends up being 57 over eight. And now I just multiply that by one fourth, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and I get an answer of 57 30 seconds. Or again, if you went decimals with things, you get 1.78125 as the approximate area under the curve, the value of the integral. Now, looking at the way our bars were constructed, you can see that our bars actually exceed the area under the curve. There are portions of the bars that are above the curve. For this reason, we know that this sum is going to be an overestimate. So it is likely higher than the actual value for the integral. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the right Riemann sum. 
using four rectangles. Let's go up and draw those bars first. So to do a right Riemann, we've got our four subintervals. You're going to take the right endpoint that's on the function and bring it back over to the left to create your rectangles. Because remember, it's got to be the right endpoint that's on the function. I go to the function value and I draw my bar over to the left, creating a right endpoint on the function. And what you should be able to see from this picture is it looks like all of these bars are under the curve and we've got some gaps here. So this is likely going to be an underestimate of the value of the integral. Now to make things shorter and easier, just like with the left approximation, every rectangle ended up having a width of 1 fourth. The same thing is true here. So again, I'm going to cut to the chase and just factor out that width of 1 fourth. And then I need to figure out which function values are creating the heights of the bars. Now keep in mind, it's the right endpoint. So as you can see here, the right endpoint is at 1 quarter for the first bar. So the first function value I need to start summing up is for 1 fourth. Then the next right endpoint is located at 1 half, then 3 quarters, then 1. Now that I've written out the approximating sum, the next step is to substitute the function values. And one thing I should mention with this, if you're going to use the decimals, you really do have to hang on to all the decimal places as you go through these calculations. You don't want to round before the very end of the problem, because if you do, you're going to introduce a rounding error. So if I pick up my calculator, add all of those fractions inside the parentheses, I'm going to have 49 over 8. I get 49 over 32 which is the decimal approximately 1.53125. And that, like we said before, is an underestimate. So now what we know is the actual integral is going to be somewhere between 49 over 32 and 57 over 32. Now it turns out we can get even closer by trying the trapezoidal approximation. So for the trapezoidal, you take the left and the right, which we've already got calculated, and you just divide those by two. If you're asked to write out the trapezoidal sum, you would actually, instead of just taking these final values and computing the math, you would go back up to the left one, which is here, and the right one, which is here, and you would be writing those out. Now, they both have the one-fourth in front. So again, we can kind of take that one-fourth out in front. Then all I do is I see, okay, I've got an f of zero in this sum. I don't have any in this sum, so I'm just going to put that in there once. But then notice what happens. I have an f of one-fourth here and here. So I have two of them. So that value gets counted twice. Plus, now I look at f of one-half. I have two of those. I have 2f of 3 quarters, and then f of 1 only appears one time. And then I would take and divide all of that by 2. Now, if you do the substitution and you add them all up, multiply by a quarter, divide it by 2, that is going to give you the same thing as just taking the individual results. The only reason you would need to do this is if it, you're asked to write out the approximating sum for the trapezoidal sum. But as it is, I'm going to just go ahead and take my L of 4, which was my 57 over 32. I'm going to add to that the right approximation, and then I'm supposed to take that and divide it by 2, 106 over 32. Then I'm supposed to divide that by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. So I get 106 over 64, 53, 30 seconds, and I get 1.65 
0.625. That would be for a trapezoidal approximation. And with the trapezoidal, you would be using both endpoints. And so I'll clear off this one and show you what that would look like. So I connect the first dot to the second dot, second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth. And in so doing, because those lines are slanted, again, it's a little bit hard to see, you have now created trapezoids. And you can see how well that kind of hugs the curve. This is an integral that we're able to calculate. So I'm going to do that just to show you how close the approximations came. If I integrate, I take the antiderivative here. When you add one to the exponent, it's going to become a cubed. So divide by that. Don't lose your negative sign. The 2 will become a 2x. And we're supposed to evaluate this from 0 to 1. So we're going to have And then just thinking ahead, if I plug in zero into both terms, both terms become zero. So I'm going to just end up subtracting zero. And here again, just make sure that you cube the one first and then make it negative. And so the actual exact value of this integral is 5 thirds. And as a decimal, that's going to be 1.6 repeating. So you can see, in fact, that the left sum was over, the right sum was under, and trapezoidal brought us close. If we were to in increase our number of rectangles, because they're skinnier, they, they more closely match the area under the curve. So you can imagine if I were to use 10 subintervals, create 10 rectangles, 100 subintervals, 100 rectangles. You can see why doing this by hand would get really difficult. So we're going to learn some other ways to do this, but it's important to do it by hand a couple of times so that you really understand the process and what's happening. <laughs>